Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now on today's episode of things I bought without reading the description properly we have this Zotac mining card. Advertised as a cut down 3 gig GTX 1060 this 640 core P106-90 is actually closer to the 1050 in terms of specs but unlike both of those, it has no display output connectors. This is something I realized only after it had arrived. Originally released by Nvidia for miners to try and stop them buying up all the gaming GPUs, this mining card essentially started appealing to gamers thanks to its low price tag and its compatibility with standard drivers after a couple of registry tweaks. I'll leave a link to a very helpful Linus Tech Tips forum about setting this up, but so as long as you have an Intel 4th gen CPU or better, or AMD APU like the Ryzen 5 3400G that I'm using today, this should work and it's not very difficult to get it working. Basically though, this card sits in the PCI Express slot as normal and then by hooking up a display cable to your motherboard's output, this card can be accessed through high performance mode in Windows after installing the Nvidia drivers and editing a couple of registry keys. The bad news? is that NVIDIA clamped down on this after the 417.22 drivers. So these are the latest ones that can actually be used. Because of this, some games won't launch, despite deleting any previous system config files, and other newer games will actually start, but the performance will be much worse than a regular 1060 or even 1050. Maybe even the integrated Vega graphics found on the 3400G here might do a better job than this card in some instances. Watch Dogs Legion was a good example of this. From the in-game graphics menu we can see that the card is being used as the primary GPU, but even at the low settings the game runs at less than 30 FPS, but it does run after all, which is a good thing. Now, of course, this might just be the performance that you'd expect with a 1050 anyway, but I can't confirm that as I don't have one at the moment. Oh, by the way, NVIDIA Shadowplay doesn't work either, so you can't record gameplay footage through that method. I also couldn't use my capture card because of the whole lack of output connector thing, hence the old school screen recording. With that said though, I could use MSI Afterburner to record in Cyberpunk with no adverse effects, and surprisingly this worked even with the old drivers. Now other games like titles that released before the 417.22 Nvidia drivers will run very well. GTA 5 for example ran with 60 FPS on average even with the high settings. Now this was even the case for the busier downtown areas. Those who are happy with 30 FPS could turn things up even higher, though texture quality is best kept at either normal or high because of the 3GB VRAM limitation. Still, GTA 5 is playable and enjoyable on this P106 mining card. I remember when the 3GB and 6GB 1060s first launched and a lot of people, including myself, said that the 3 gig card would be good for a long time. But it seems that now, ignoring the GTA results here, 3 gigs is quite awkward, in fact, especially when you have slightly lower end cards like the 1050 Ti offering 4 gigs of VRAM. This thing's issue with modern games goes beyond the actual VRAM limitation, though, of course. Now I think Battlefield 5's problem is more with the driver version here than the hardware as this didn't perform very well at all. We saw around 35 FPS at low, which is poor even in comparison to a 2 gig 1050. That being said, for a card I paid £50 for, it's not too bad, and sometimes this can be found at an even lower price, but my advice so far would probably be leave it for the miners. The lack of support for newer drivers means that it's too hit and miss as far as performance is concerned, unless of course you do just want to play pre-2018 games and less intensive ones.
Speaking of less intensive games, and Fortnite ran really well with around 70 FPS on average and the medium settings. Now there were some drops here and there that mainly happened as per usual when diving out of the battle bus or waiting around with all the other players before the game started. This was also running at 1080p, so yeah, the experience was pretty solid with this game. Now of course you can make use of low settings or you can even switch to the new performance mode which may be better suited to those of you who want as many frames as possible, but for anyone targeting 60 FPS or a plus 60 FPS average, then the medium preset is absolutely fine. With the outer world, which can be quite troublesome with certain hardware, we were seeing frame rates that hovered around the 35 to 45 FPS mark most of the time. Now this was with mostly low settings, but there were a few options set to medium. The P106-90 here is offering a better than last gen console experience, put it that way, as far as the base PS4 and Xbox One are concerned, but the frame time graph tells a story of stutters and dips that aren't present with those versions and overall this could be quite off-putting especially as you make your way toward those busier built-up town areas like Edgewater for example so placing a 30 fps cap on the game may be your best bet with this card so with all that said then, and despite the lack of newer driver support, Nvidia's mining intended P106 can still game to an extent, though things will likely only go downhill from here in terms of performance, especially in those games that require certain driver versions. For the price, it's still an okay option for Fortnite and GTA to name a couple, if you have a motherboard and CPU that this thing will actually work with. but. Again, I will leave a link to the very helpful Linus Tech Tips forum that goes into a lot of detail about these cards and setting them up. There are also a few different variants about as well. You can get 6 gig versions. Some of them have 768 cores. Some of them like this one have 640 cores. But either way, both are going to be limited, I think, to that 417.22 driver version. So I'm not sure just how performance would really differ there. It's always enjoyable finding cars like this in the wild and uh, I always have fun testing them out because you never quite know just how well they're going to do. Now this is a subject that has been spoken about in the past on other channels. I don't think I've ever covered this myself. A lot of videos date to a couple of years back but even then people were saying that because of the Nvidia sort of driver blockage of uh, those new drivers, that yeah, this wasn't going to be a good idea for very long. But it's still nice to see that some games do start and run in 2021 using this older driver version. But there we go. All that's left to say is thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like on it down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Let me know if you have one of these cards and maybe you use it on a daily basis. I'd love to hear your P106 stories in the comments. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.